Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and today is the last official day of Magic Origins spoilers. So we've been through the official two weeks, the E3 spoilers, all the leaks that came before that, and we finally made it here. So tomorrow the full set will be spoiled, and we'll begin our full set review, starting with the white cards tomorrow, and then we'll go color by color, and then on the last day we'll review the rest of the cards in the set that are either artifact or multicolor. So, having said that, today we have 18 new cards to take a look at. Now, some of these are screen captures from videos, so they look a little fuzzy, but they actually look pretty good for video screen captures, and you'll kind of see that as we go. But first off, before we get into our new cards, here is one that was already spoiled. It was Negate. It's a reprint, but this is the first time we're seeing it in its Magic Origins art and card frame, so I just wanted you all to be able to take a look at that. And now, let's get started with our true spoilers. And the first one is Anointer of Champions, and it's a white one drop, one one creature, and it can tap to give target attacking creature plus one plus one until end of turn. It's a decent one drop, especially in the type of limited decks that white wants to be, which is basically white weenies. This is going to make blocking very difficult for your opponent, and never underestimate that. This card's going to do a little more work in limited than it appears. Obviously, it doesn't really have a home outside of limited. Next is Aromancer, and this is a reprint, cost 3, it's a 2-2, and when it enters the battlefield, you may return target enchantment card from your graveyard to your hand. Now, there's this pretty significant enchantment matters theme in Limited, but I'm just having a hard time believing this is going to be a good strategy. They're spread out between all the colors, they're very expensive in most cases, so if you don't have an enchantment to target with this, this is not a very economical card. I don't see it really doing a lot in Limited for you. Uh, it's a decent commander card. It does see some playing commander decks today if they're enchantment heavy. I guess the big question is, will cards like this push some of the devotion and Theros-based standard decks, maybe give them a little bit of breath of a, a breath of life before they rotate out? Possibly. And that might be where this card finds a home, at least for a few weeks before Theros is taken out of standard. Next is Celestial Flare, and yet another reprint. This costs two white. It's an instant. Target player sacrifices an attacking or blocking creature. So it's removal, but it's not super exciting removal. It is two white on color, which is a little annoying. And on top of that, it gives your opponent the option of which creatures to sacrifice. If they're attacking with one creature or blocking with one creature, this becomes better. But if it's multiple attacks and blocks, they're going to get rid of their weakest creature. So it's not super great removal but hey this is limited you need removal you're going to play it if this is what you got next is sigil of the empty throne and this is yet another reprint costs five it's an enchantment when you cast an enchantment spell put a four four white angel creature token with flying onto the battlefield so honestly i don't see this doing a lot of work in limited it's very expensive you're going to take a turn off to cast it and then you don't get any value out of it unless you cast more enchantments and the, like i said the enchantments in this set are pretty pricey for the most part with a few exceptions now if you happen to have some cheap enchantments for some reason in your deck go for it but really i haven't seen many or really any outside the rare slot so where is this going to be used i mean this card does see com some commander play in the right deck so it does have that purpose but even as far as standard goes trying to shoehorn this into like white devotion or something like that i really just don't see it happening just because it's a little too pricey i think to be to be effective next is stalwart avon and this is a good limited guy he costs three for a one three flyer renown one i kind of wish you're paying three for a two three that they weren't making me uh get the renown trigger <laughs> but hey you need evasion it's going to be just fine for you and limited Next is Whirler Rogue, and he costs 4 for a 2-2. Two, two. When he comes into play, though, you do get two colorless Thopter tokens, which is kind of nice. And you can tap two untapped creatures you control, and target creature can't be blocked this turn. So he's going to be great in that is it artifact deck. That's his sole purpose. That's really probably the only place he's going to be really great in. Uh, but yeah, he's going to be there for you. You'll draft him if you're in that if you're in that deck. Next is Willbreaker. Now here's a good card. This is probably the best card of the day. 
Cost 5, it's a 2-3. Whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes the target of a spell or ability you control, gain control of that creature for as long as you control Willbreaker. This is crazy. I, so first off, I'm thinking Commander. This is going to be awesome in Commander, where there's a lot of targets, and you can steal a lot of different creatures with you know, a lot of abilities and power. This, this is going to be nuts in Commander. As far as Limited goes, it's going to be a fine guy for you in Limited. You can play 5, and then there's little tricks out there, you know, cards that are going to just be able to target a creature to give it a little buff or something that you can then use that to steal the creature. I mean, that's really amazing stuff. So this is going to be a really fun limited card, really great commander card. I don't really see a place in standard for it just because it does cost five. And when you're at five in blue, especially, there's some big houses you could be playing that could be ending the game for you where this is going to cause you to do more work to try to end the game. So I don't really see it getting there, but it's going to be a really fun card in those other formats. Next is Blightcaster. It costs 4, he's a 2-3, and whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may have target creature get minus 2, minus 2 till end of turn. This is also a reprint, and again, you don't want to pay 4 for a 2-3, so you're really paying for this ability, and like I said, maybe this finds a home in, in Mono Black Devotion or something like that before that deck is, can no longer be a thing in Standard, but I don't really see it getting a lot of limited play. Next is Fleshbag Marauder, and he costs 3 for a 3-1. He's a zombie. When he enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature. And this is yet another reprint. This guy's decent. He has a Chainer's Edict effect when he comes into play. He can sack himself, so you get some value out of him. He's a, definitely a good limited guy. Next reprint of the day is Nantuko Husk. And this costs 3, it's a 2-2, two, two. you can sack creatures to it, it gets plus 2, plus 2 to end a turn. It's a zombie, so that could definitely matter in Limited. The only thing I will say, in the past when I played with this card, even in Limited, it's a little annoying because it doesn't have evasion. Like, I like these type of cards, like, say, Fallen Angel, that have evasion, then they're a lot better. This, you're in a situation where you can maybe pump some creatures into it but then you lose board presence and it's really easy to block you know it can be a finisher under the right circumstances but it's just very conditional so it's not always going to make your cut some decks will want it if you're going to be playing a lot of little creatures or tokens or something uh, but for the most part it's not always going to be there for you Next reprint is Smash to Smithereens, and this one costs two. It's an instant destroy target artifact, and Smash to Smithereens deals three damage to the artifact's controller. This card is crazy in Modern Masters Limited, and I think it's going to be pretty strong in this environment, too. We haven't seen all the artifacts that I think we're going to see, but anyone who's playing those Thopter tokens can get hit by this. On top of that, there's also some good artifact creatures that that will be floating around a little bit of equipment that could be decent so this probably is main deckable in most cases but i guess we'll just have to see how the format goes and once we see the full set spoiler we'll be able to make a better estimation of that next card is also a reprint it's might of the masses and this is a great limited card i mean in some ways it's not as good as giant growth in some ways it's better than giant growth but you know, those cards are going to be great for you in Limited when you have creatures and you'll know you'll have a lot of combat going on. Other than that, you're probably not going to get a whole lot of use out of it, but good Limited card. Sky Snare Spider. Cost 6. It's a 6-6 six, six with Vigilance and Reach. I like this guy a lot. He's at the Uncommon slot, so this is another really nice house for green players in Limited. So a really good green card. It's going to get in there for some damage. It can block flyers. Very strong card to draft. Other than that, you probably won't see much play, but very good limited card. Somberwald Alpha. Costs 4 for a 3-2. Whenever a creature you control becomes blocked, it gets plus 1, plus 1 to end a turn. And you can pay a green and a colorless, and target creature you control gains trample. So paying 4 for a 3-2 is not super good. It's okay. But you're really paying for that ability to give your other creatures trample, and that's going to be really helpful with cards like the last one we saw. Cards that don't have evasion that are going to need some way to get damage across, you're going to be really happy to have this on the board. And green has a lot of big creatures out of evasion that we've seen spoiled over the course of the week, last couple weeks. So this is going to be good in limited, I, I really think. Outside of limited, probably not much use again, but good limited card. 
Next is Zendikar's Royal. Cost 2 green, 3 colorless. It's an enchantment. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, put a 2-2 two, two green elemental creature token onto the battlefield. I like this enchantment better than most of the others. Now, it still costs 5, but at least there's a chance that you could play this and then drop your land and get a 2-2 two, two creature the same turn. You're not always completely taking the turn off, so I would consider playing this in limited just because... At some point, especially mid to late game, this could become very good for you in a green deck if you have ways to pump those creatures. It could be very good. But it's not going to always fit into some all decks. Look at your curve. See if it's going to fit. This card might get better when Battle for Zendikar comes out if Landfall makes a return. Who knows? It could have some implications in Standard if it's really heavily supported by the next set. But right now, it's a decent limited card. Next is Blood Curse Knight. It costs three. It's a three-two, and this is the Orzov entry into the gold card cycle. And as long as you control an enchantment, Blood Curse Knight gets plus one plus one and has Life Link. So he's great three for a four-three with Life Link. If you have an enchantment in play, that's phenomenal. So maybe he could get into a Black Devotion deck. The white's a little awkward, but it could be good in a deck like that in standard until it rotates out. As far as limited goes, he's still a good guy. Even if you're not counting on the buff, 3-2 for 3 is still decent and limited. I, I would still play him. He's still going to be just fine for you. And if you do have a way to get an enchantment into play, he's pretty strong. Next is Mage Ring Responder. And this reminds me a lot of some of the old, like, uh, kind of Colossus cards I used to make. But it costs 7. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. It doesn't untap during your untap step. You do have to pay 7 to untap it. Uh, but when he attacks, it deals 7 damage to target creature defending player controls. So I like this. Your opponent's either taking 7 and losing a creature potentially, or losing 2 creatures if they're blocking it. And they got to deal with this. Some way, somehow, they got to deal with this. Whether it's a smash to smithereens or whatever, they got to figure something out. If they don't, yeah, you know what? It's a pain to pay the seven every turn to untap him, but you're going to win the game. <laughs> it's just going to happen at some point. So it, it's okay if you're not playing any more spells. And if you do find yourself in a corner, it is an option. You don't have to untap him. But pretty much, if you get this guy out and he can't be dealt with, you're, you're probably in a really good place. Good limited card, probably not much use other than that. And finally, our last card of the day is Foundry of Consoles. And this is a land. It can tap for colorless mana. You can pay five and tap, sacrifice it, and you get two Thopter tokens. So I would look at this land this way. This is, of course, mostly just for limited. Can't really think of many, many uses for this outside of limited. But if you have that Thopter token deck and you're looking for a way to get some more Thopter tokens... This is a way to do it. I'd probably think of this more of a spell than a land, though. Almost more like a 5 casting cost spell to get 2 Thopter tokens, which doesn't seem real good. But if you're in the market to do that, it might be okay in the right deck. The reason I'd hesitate making this part of my land count is just because those Thopter decks are probably going to be Izzet colors. You don't necessarily want to dilute your color base. Some decks, if you have a lot of artifacts, or will, will be able to pull that off. But most probably won't in limited, so just be careful of that. Other than that, it's going to be okay in those decks. So, we got through all the spoilers for the day. There's quite a few there, but many of them were reprints. So, as always, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks as always for watching. If you're still looking for quality Magic the Gathering videos, click on one of these annotations. And if you had not had a chance yet to subscribe, smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the breaking MTG news, spoilers, set reviews, crazy product openings, or gameplay videos on Heroes and Legends MTG. Talk to you again soon, and have a great day.